Hello everyone, Paul Garcia here. I'm with Francis Gomez of Gomez Girls Wrestling. Francis, what's your favorite part about watching girls wrestling? I love the fact that the girls are coming up, they're scrappy, they want to learn, they want to listen, and I just think it's great for the sport. So where do you want to see the girls wrestling program in five years or so? It's great that IHSA has recognized them. The problem is college wrestling is freestyle. And unfortunately, we need to adjust that because a lot of these girls, they need to know freestyle as well. Because they'll go in freshman year, there's certain moves or certain things that they haven't been taught or you know, know how to do, and then they fall behind in the college scene. But you also would love for it to be freestyle because it's a recruiting, you know, it's a recruiting, we need college coaches to come recognize these girls in Illinois. Now before we started recording you mentioned some pioneering women that didn't have the chance to have a girl state in the state of Illinois. Would you care to elaborate on that a little bit? Yes, I believe we have women out there like Mary Kelly, Haley Agello, Erin Goldstein, um, Allie Reagan, Veronica Carlson, Victoria Francis, Caitlin Chase, of course, Glenbar North. So you have these girls that were the pioneers. They didn't get a chance to have this kind of setting for them. And they had to wrestle boys. When you look for longevity for girls wrestling, no matter what, boys are going to be strong. And, you know, and girls' bodies sometimes aren't built to wrestle like that. You know, so, I mean, those are the girls that really put in the grind. This sport's growing so much that I just wanted to make sure that the girls, any girls from Illinois that watch this know, you know, go YouTube those girls. And those are the girls that set the wave for Illinois wrestling. How has having two daughters that are in the sport changed your perspective on it? You know, it is crazy because, you know, Austin Gomez, my son, you know, watched him wrestle and then weren't real believers in girls wrestling. And then it's like, you know what, let's do this, you know, and my girls have come a long way. They put a lot of hard work in, you know, they train and their dad has a lot to do with that. And, you know, now we've hired Haley Agello and she's perfect person, an example of where, you know, a male coach knows so many things about coaching males. Female coaches, coaching female, can offer things that maybe, you know, boys don't know how women's bodies move in a wrestling match. It's great and crazy at the same time. I, I, I love watching them, but gosh, yeah, stressful. <laughs> Should girls be able to wrestle in the boys' state tournament, do you believe? There shouldn't be an option. I think that, you know, you have a girl wrestle the boys' state tournament, and, you know, oh, we have to cheer for this girl because she's beating boys. How is that coming across fair to the boys? So I feel that now there's, you know, we have IHSA Boys Individual State Tournament. We have IHSA Girls Individual State Tournament. And I also think it's important for the higher level girls to show the new girls, you know, that are just starting, like, I want to be like her. I want to, uh, how do I get to that level to wrestle like her? You know, we need to show the other girls that the girls that know a little more have been wrestling a long time, this is what you're supposed to do. And what can you tell me about the fabulous program that is Gomez Girls Wrestling? You know what, I can tell you, you know, we've, we've Gomez Wrestling's been around for a long time and we have a great female coaching staff and I think that that's important. You know, Haley is, um, you know, our elite, with more of our elite freestyle girls, and then my daughter Alexis Gomez. She's graduating from college. Um, she's gonna be a cop, but she's gonna come into this room and actually come into Illinois and make a big impact because she's been taught how to coach the way her dad does, but female and she's, she's good, I'm excited. And I'm excited for Illinois girls to be able to work with her as well. Absolutely. Well, is there anything you'd like to say before we go ahead and get started with this uh, Girls State Finals? No, nope. just thanks, Paul, for having me on. Gomez Girls Wrestling at gmail.com, all female staff. We're looking forward to big things. All right, and there you have it. 
This whole state finals, all these interviews you're about to watch are all brought to you by Gomez Girls Wrestling. So thank you, Francis, very much. Thank you. And thank you to Gomez Girls Wrestling. I am here with Emma Angles from Bartlett High School, your 100-pound state champion, just a sophomore. Man, how does that feel? It feels great. Wonderful. What went into this, this whole tournament? How do you think your tournament went? It went really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of hard work went into it. Dedication. What do you think of the way you wrestled in that finals match? Uh, I executed what I needed to do, got it done. Hey, fair enough. A woman of few words. Now, tell me, who's been the most integral part of your success this season? My coaches and my family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, your coaches and your family. What was the game plan going into that match? Uh, we knew, I wrestled her before. I knew she was going to try to hit the arm bar, under hooks, so I made sure to keep, keep tight and not let her get that arm bar in. Now, does it mean anything extra to you that this is one of the first, one of the first few state tournaments for girls in the state of Illinois, and it's IHSA sanctioned? How does that feel, and what does that mean? Uh, it's super cool. It's really cool to see girls wrestling keep growing. Uh, I know we improved a lot from last year, so it's really cool to see the sport keep growing. What's next for you? You're just a sophomore. I guess big things. Mm -hmm. Any off-season Fargo, anything like that? Uh, no, I actually play softball in the off-season. Okay, there you go. A phenomenal athlete. You're not doing too much off-season stuff, but you still get a state title. Well done and well-deserved. Thank you. I'm here with Harley Hiller from Loyola. This is your first state title. You are the 105-pound state champion in the state of Illinois. How does that sound? It feels really amazing. I'm just so grateful for this opportunity, and I think it was such an amazing tournament, and I'm so happy. You wrestled very hard and intensely the whole, whole six minutes. You threw her to her back one time with a perfectly legal move, but they stopped the match. It's a questionable thing to do. What went through your head at that moment? I was just happy. I knew I was up, and I was just knew that I had to finish this match out hard, and I wasn't going to let her get me, and I was just very happy that I was up at the point. What were your coaches telling you in the corner when that happened? Um, they asked me if I wanted to go neutral or ride her out, and I thought I had a chance at going neutral and I could take her down again, and so that's what I decided to do. Mm -hmm. It seems like you have a pretty strong mindset. How did that get developed, and what was going through your head during and before the match? So we have mindset training at Loyola, and it's like really amazing, and it's helped me so much. And I feel like normally I'm like so nervous before my matches, and this time I was just like really ready. And I've been wrestling boys all year, so I knew that like I could be ready to go and good. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think about girls wrestling? And you're kind of on the forefront of that right now. It's a relatively new thing, but it is booming, and you're a state champion in the state of Illinois. What does that mean for women's wrestling? Um, I just think it's so awesome. It's crazy how much it's growing. Like, it's just crazy the numbers going, and I'm just very excited to be starting, putting a start to it in the first state championship. Now tell me more about mindset training. What are they telling you, and what are you telling yourself, more importantly, before you wrestle? Um, so we just train, like, just go out there really hard and try to break your opponents, and that's what I feel like I tried to do. I just went there as hard as possible, and I knew if I wrestled my best, I could win. Well, there you have it. I guess the mindset training works. Congratulations. Well deserved. Thank you. I am here with Ayane Jasinski from Grant High School, your 105-pound state champion. Wow, that was an intense match. You went into overtime. You got the takedown. What went through your mind when you got the job done? It was like the best feeling ever because last year I didn't do as good as I wanted to, but this year I pulled through. It was really emotional. Oh, yeah. yeah, you deserved it and you earned it the hard way. And now let's not make any secrets about it. There was some drama at the end of that match. The other team's coach didn't think that it was two points. Your team did. Of course, in the ref, they went back and forth. They didn't go back and forth. They actually agreed that it was a two-point takedown. Were you rattled at all when all that controversy was happening? Yeah, I was a little nervous that I'd have to keep going even though like I felt like it was too, like fair and square. Mm -hmm. I was like, but I was ready to go again. Like, mm -hmm. got to keep going. Sure. What was your mindset going into that match? Um, this is your match. You deserve it just as much as she does, so you have to take it from her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who has been an integral part of your success this season? Um, my coach, Joe Cover, Johnson, Gone, Coach Quirk, my dad, all my partners, Joanna Snow, everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you certainly deserve this win. It's got to feel good, right? Is this your first state title? 
Yes, it is. Uh -huh. How does that feel? It's amazing. Like, I'm on top of the world. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. Okay, well, you got a couple more years to come back and do it again. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here with Gabriela Gomez from Glen Bard North, just a sophomore, your 115-pound state champion two-time champ. How does that sound? Um, it sounds great. You know, I've been working a lot, working towards this goal, and I feel if I just keep going the way I am, I'll be a four-timer, and that's my big goal. I just finished one of my goals with uh, the takedown record to uh, 245 wow. takedowns in the season. So, you know, I'm trying to get up on that board. Trying, my next goal is try to get more than 288. Wow, you're certainly a takedown machine. You got two tech falls to get to the finals, and the finals was dominant as well. You come from a well-known family. When it comes to wrestling in Illinois, the Gomez name is synonymous with success. What has your family done for you, and, and how have they contributed to your success? Um, I mean, there's so much. I barely can name them, but I mean, my parents, again, putting me in this sport, not knowing what it would take for me to get to where I am today, and my coaches at Glumbard, at my gym, even my friends and family, uh, friends and uh, wrestling friends, two different things, you know? They all see a different side of me. When I'm at school, I'm a different person. When I'm, in, when I'm at wrestling practice, I'm a whole different person. So I feel all those little components help me get to where I am today, and I'm very thankful for it, because a lot of people don't have a support system like I do, and I'm very thankful. Mm -hmm. Now, you are just a sophomore in high school, but you wrestle like a seasoned veteran in college. What goes into your mindset? I mean, who, what have you been taught, and how were you thinking before those matches? Um, I really think about what am I good at. That's what I think about. I say, what am I good at? And it's better to wrestle uncomfortable than comfortable. And um, going into those matches, I don't try to do the same things, but if they're there, they're there. I always try to do something different, uh, try to show a different aspect of my wrestling that a lot of people don't see. A lot of people see the dominant, mean Gabby, but really I'm the sweetest person you ever meet. So going into those matches, I have a straight face, I don't care. I go into that match wanting to dominate, and that's what I did this weekend. That you absolutely did. Now what does it mean to you to be a pioneer of women's wrestling? It means a lot. It shows how much, again, like how I work towards this goal, but it also shows what this sport can be. Because last year, it was the first ever state tournament. I was proud to be one of those first girls to be ever an Illinois state champion at a 105. So now I'm just living on that legacy and being a 115 champ. Now let's see what I can do next year and the year after. And seeing little girls come up to me, following me on Instagram, asking where I can train. I'm always open. I'll help anybody, um, anywhere to get anything for anybody else. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Very well spoken. Hard to believe you're a sophomore. Last question here. What's next for you? Uh, trying to make that world team. Try to get that gold. Right on. Good luck to you and congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. I am here with Angelina Cassiopeia, sophomore, a two-time state champ in the state of Illinois. How does that sound? Amazing. <laughs> Pretty good. Wow. And now you hear the last name Cassiope. Everyone's going to know it. Yeah. They're going to think of your brother, Tony Cassiope, at Iowa, a phenom. Does that bother you at all? I mean, you are the um, two-time champ. The spotlight's on you today. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really bother me that, that much because I know soon it'll be Tony Cassiope's my. Like, it'll be the other way around and I'll be the famous one and he'll just be there. <laughs> So it doesn't bother me too much right now. I love the confidence. Now, where does that come from, the confidence? Um, I don't know. I guess my family. They're all very confident, so I'd say there. Okay. Now, what went into your success this season? Who do you have to blame for that? <laughs> uh, my brothers, my two twin brothers. They're great in the room with me. They beat up on me all the time. And then I have other practice partners in there that really push me to be the best. And my coach, Tyler DeMoss, is great. What was your mindset going into that match? And if you don't mind, maybe walk me through it because I didn't get the chance to watch it. It happened too fast. Um, I was pretty confident because I beat Pinder in sectionals mm -hmm. two weeks ago. So I went in there and knew I had to get a, to my offense and just get on top and get the win. And how did it uh, end? Uh, I got a cradle. Okay, cradle yeah. and a pin, what period? First. <laughs> there, you, there you have it. What is next for you? You're just a sophomore. You're going to be back here for a few more years. What are you going to do this week? Um, well, next week I'm on a dual team in Tulsa, so just keep wrestling. Never stop. Fantastic. Who would you like to thank? Uh, my family, my coaches, and my practice partners. All right. Well, there you have it. We'll see you back here for the next two years. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm here with Cadence Didick from Freeport High School. You're 125 pounds state champion this year. How does that sound? Um, it sounds pretty good, but yeah. What went into this uh, state title this year? Um, a lot of work with my team. Um, 
And I was actually really excited because there were other girls on my team this year. And last year, I didn't have any other girls that I could train with. So this year, we had like a different feel to it, kind of. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you do a lot of off-season training. I saw you at Albra Athletics, and you're training with the best of the best there. What is your training mindset? How hard are you trying to push yourself? Um, I'm trying to push myself because um, besides the state tournament, I have higher goals, like the world team. So this is just like a thing that can help me prepare for the world teams and all that. Mm -hmm. So world teams, are you going to wrestle in college then? Um, yes, I plan to. Plan okay. on it. What are your goals for next year? Um, next year, I want to try to make a world team, but um, yeah, that's it. Okay, and presumably a state title as well. Mm -hmm. Probably that too. You're a junior this yeah, year? I'm a junior. Okay. Who do you have to thank for the success you've had this year? Um, I have to thank all my coaches, all my teammates, my family, and basically everyone that's helped me along the way. Mm -hmm. Care to name any names? Who has helped you along the um, way? My coaches, Coach Art, Coach Rennington, Coach Strang, um, my partners, Jacob, um, the girls on my team. Um, I, could, I could keep on going, but <laughs> that's the main ones right now. Talk to me about the way you wrestled in that match. How do you think you did? Um, I thought I did pretty good because I tried to stay dominant and um, I wanted to push the pace. So um, if I, I wasn't getting my moves on bottom, I let her up so I could still push the pace. Well, you earned it. You certainly deserve this state title. Can't wait to see you next year and good luck with all those lofty goals you have. Thank you. I'm here with Italia Watson Castro from Homewood Flossmoor. You're a senior. You're a two-time state champion. Okay. How does that feel? Um, it feels great, actually. <laughs> Tiring, but it yeah. feels great. So what are your thoughts on the way you performed tonight? Um, tonight, I feel like I performed at a steady pace, um, not too fast, not too slow. Um, I feel like I did a really good job, especially with injuries. Mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like overall, I did amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, what were your coaches telling you before that match? Um, before they were just telling me to take it two minutes at a time, um, not to overthink because I tend to mm -hmm. overthink and I know what to do. Um, and to just listen because there's times where I'll just blow them off and be like, no, I got it. Mm -hmm. But they were like, just listen, trust the process, go out there two minutes at a time and take it all home. Now you had some fans in red that were making a whole lot of noise when you won there. Who were they and how important are they for your success? Um, those are my teammates and my family. Um, they're very important for my success. Um, we've came a long way, especially with not having a state when I first started. Mm -hmm. So we came a very long way and we grew together. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what's next for you? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> who, do you, who has paid up? The, who should you thank, do you think, for the success you've had, not just this year, but last year as well? Like I said, you're a two-time state champion. Yeah. Um, definitely thank my father and the head coach, Jim Sacco, and Coach Rob. He's a big part. He's my training partner, but also my coach. So those three definitely play a big part in my process. There we go. Well, Italia, congratulations, two-time state champ. I'm here with Natavia Wixom from Rockford Boiling Catholic. Sorry about the noise back there, but hey, how does it feel to be a state champion? It feels great. I've worked really hard for this, and I'm proud of myself. Even though I probably should have wrestled better, I still feel good, and I know that I deserve that first place today. Mm -hmm. Now, you said you should have worked harder. You had two tech falls on your way to this finals and a pin, and you had a pretty commanding lead there, but it sounds like you're pretty tough on yourself. Who's kind of telling you to, to think like that? Um, my dad and my brother always push me to be the best. Um, it doesn't matter, like, win or lose. If I win a match and it's not the way I want it, it can always be improved. So um, my dad really helps me, and my brother really motivates me to think always to be above and uh, wrestle my best. Mm -hmm. So you said that you could have worked a little harder. What are your thoughts on the way you wrestled? Um, I think I wrestled really well the first period and second period, but um, that um, third period, I know I could have scored more offense. I kind of coasted because I know I had a lead, but um, I definitely could have worked and pushed a little bit more in that match. Understood. Now you're just a junior. What's next for you? Um, just wrestling in the off season and putting out work and trying to come back next year and be another state champion. There we have it. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm here with Mackenzie Pratt from Edwardsville High School, the sophomore state champion. How does that sound? It sounds amazing. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on the way that you wrestled? Uh, my thoughts are like, I was very aggressive and I was very relaxed and I was excited. Mm -hmm. 
and I was really, really confident, which that's very rare for me because I'm normally not confident in my wrestling or any of my matches. Mm -hmm. Now tell me what exactly happened there. I, I confess I didn't get a chance to watch it. I was interviewing the last champion, and we heard a whole lot of noise. So walk me through the match, if you would. <laughs> so there's not a lot that happened, but she tied up real heavy with me. So I kept on pressuring in. I felt her like come back at me. I was like, that's a perfect time for a slide-by. So I hit a nice slide-by. I brought her down. We went out of bounds because it was close to out of bounds. I tried to arm bar, went out of bounds, so then we brought her back, back in the center. He blew the whistle. She tried to stand up into a quad pod. I chopped her back down with my tight waist, and then I kind of did like a head lever, like half head lever, half chop at the same time. So then I got her down, arm barred it, went for a half on the other side, ran the half while still had the arm bar in. And then she rolled out, I went into a headlock position. She tried to roll me, I lifted it up as high as I could and like pray to God <laughs> because this all happened in like 25 seconds. And then I got the pin and then I jumped up with joy because I was so happy, It's never this has never happened to me before. Holy moly, well that is fantastic. This is just as much noise as they were making for you a second ago. So what's next for you? Fargo. Fargo. All right, what are you trying to do there at Fargo then? Not play sixth again. I want to walk up the podium and hopefully like big walks. I want to try and win the championship. All right. Well, good luck to you and congratulations. Thank you. I'm here with Sydney Perry of Batavia High School. Sydney, that was a big and loud match between you and Val Hamilton from EPG. What were your thoughts and emotions going into this one? Um, I felt like I was, she was holding my position a lot, um, so I started getting a little bit nervous, but before the match I felt great. Um, I think I wrestled pretty good. Just wish I would have pushed that pace a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Was there any added pressure? I mean, a lot of eyeballs were on this match specifically. Did you feel any pressure? Yeah, I felt a lot of pressure from mm -hmm. the media, but I didn't really let it get to me. It didn't really matter. I've been wrestling um, at big matches for... Like, I've been wrestling in big matches for a while. Mm -hmm. And what were your coaches saying to you before that match to get you ready? Um, they are just telling me I got it. Mm -hmm. I know how to wrestle. If I wrestle with my full potential, I'll be fine. There we go. Good coaches. And now, who contributed to your success this season more than anyone, would you say? Uh, high school coaches, parents, funding, um, uh, my club coaches, Izzy. Corey, Danny, all those guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. So what's next for you? You're just a junior. You'll be back here next year. What are you going to do this week? Uh, just train my butt off. Get ready for World Team Trials. There we go. Well, good luck to you. You got some high, high goals, and I think you can achieve them. Well done tonight. Thank you. I'm here with Alicia Tucker from Plainfield Central High School, your 155-pound state champion this year. Man, that was a gritty match. You're just a sophomore, but you don't wrestle like one. You wrestled like a veteran. It came down to the very last few seconds. It was tied up 1-1, and you got the reversal. What was going through your head at the end of that match? Um, I really just didn't want to lose. Uh, last year I lost at sectionals, so I wasn't able to be here. But um, this year I made sure to wrestle all the way through, wrestle through every position, and just do the best I can. Mm -hmm. Who do you have to thank for your success this year, especially compared to last year? Um, definitely my coaches, Coach Kupski, Coach Hildebrand, um, and my dad. He's been, my both my parents actually, he's been my biggest supporter since day one. Both of them have. They've showed up to everything the best they could. Like They're just an amazing support system and they're great coaches. So how does it feel just to be here for the first time competing? Not only competing, but winning the whole darn thing, but what's it been like for you? Um, it's been such a surreal experience. Like I didn't realize it'd be this, like, I don't know the word, uh -huh. this huge. Yeah. I went to Fargo last year and it feels nothing like this. Wow. Wonderful. What kind of emotions are you feeling right now? Um, happiness. I'm just so happy to be here. So happy to have won it. I feel I trained very hard to get here. So well, I there I you. It. Yes, absolutely. You deserve it and you earned it the hard way. What's next for you? Um, next weekend, Folk Style Nationals. All right. Well, good luck there and congratulations on your state title.
Thank you. I'm here with August Rotman, your 170 pound girls state champion this year. How does that sound? It sounds amazing. It sounds so much better than third place last year. Right. So how did it feel not only to get the state title, but to get it done with a pin? It feels amazing. I wasn't expecting the pin at all, but it just adds on top of to it. What kind of thoughts and feelings and emotions were you feeling before that match? Was there pressure? Were you nervous or were you uh, something else? Um, I was a little nervous, but I was ready getting in my mind. Um, I knew what I had to do to get it done, and I just executed it. What kind of work went into the success that you've had this season? Um, just practicing over the off season and practicing during the season with my teammates really helped me out. Now, who has contributed to the success that you're having? Um, all of my coaches and all my teammates. Care to name any names or anything? Um, um, some of my high school teammates that have been along with me um, all my years are like Tyson Rakers, Aston Zobris, um, all the sophomores with me in my grade. Well, so what is next for you? You're a sophomore, you're a state champion. What's this week going to look like? A lot of congratulations. <laughs> like, the past weeks have been good lucks, and mm -hmm. I can say, hey, I did it. That you have. You have certainly done it, and you've earned it the hard way, and you did it with the pin in grand fashion. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm here with Inni Odumasu from Homewood Flossmoor, your state champion. How does that sound? It sounds surreal. It did not feel real when I was in that moment. And when I was done, I was looking at my coach was like, that really just happened? You just saw that? And I was like, I feel like so giddy right now. It's like an adrenaline rush. Like I can't like get rid of it at this point. It's just flowing through me. Hey, it's a wonderful thing. And not only did you win the state title, you pinned your way through the entire tournament. Has anyone, did, I mean, how does that sound to you? I didn't think, I didn't check. Like I thought like I at least went with the full round with somebody. But now that you, th you say it, yeah, I did pin everybody. It feels great. <laughs> Who has contributed to the success that you've had this year? Uh, a lot of people, actually. My coaches, my family. I don't thank my coaches for everything they taught me. Last year, I got sixth place, and it really bummed me out. And they looked at me, and they said, you are much better than... Like, they literally looked at me, and they are like, if you go on that mat, I can tell you right now, you're going to win. And last year, I had a problem with, like, getting in my head, and I was like, oh, my God, what she does this, does this, does this. My coach was like, you better clear your head right now. Clear it. Everything out. And he said, get on that mat and wrestle like you know how to wrestle. And I've done that this whole tournament. And look where I am. I'm a, I'm a state champion. Man, it sounds as good as it feels, I'm sure. What, what are you going to do moving forward now? Uh, definitely going to continue. I'm in my junior year. I'm planning to wrestle my senior year. Um, I'm thinking of doing off-season. Definitely uh, some weight training just to get like keep my body in the state that it is right now and even improve for next year's tournament. Mm -hmm. College wrestling, are you thinking about it? I'm considering it, but I want to go into the med medicine, uh, med, med school, or like pre-med. And I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work out with the schedules of the different schools, because each university and school is different. So, I mean, if there is a possibility that I can continue my wrestling career, I'll definitely take it. But if there's not m much I can do, I really love medicine and I really love helping people. So, I, unfortunately, if it comes to medicine versus wrestling, I'm unfortunately going to take rest, uh, medicine. Hey, I don't think that's too unfortunate. You're a stellar wrestler and you care about people. Good things ahead for you. Any congratulations. Thank you so much. Have a good day. I am here with Kiara Ganey from Belleville, your 235 state champion. How does that sound? Amazing. Just sounds awesome. Uh -huh. You left no doubt about it out there. You are the best wrestler in this field, in this weight class, here in the state of Illinois. What went into your training to get you ready for that? Everything from cardio to just wrestling. Um, we train um, every day, seven days a week. So, you know, just hard grinding. Um, I had great training partners on the boys and girls side. So just hard training. Hard training. It shows that your style is intense. It's forward. It's constant pressure. What are your coaches telling you and, and how are they pushing you? What are they telling you before your match to make you wrestle like that? Just wrestle aggressive in our pace. We always work to um, control the mat and not be controlled. So we wrestle a match at a time and six minutes at a time. You can't control anything else outside of those six minutes. So you just do you. Mm -hmm. Very well spoken. It's obvious you have a great wrestling mind. You're a senior this year. You end with a title, a commanding title. What is next for you? Um, go wrestle in college and, you know, do good there. I can't wait to see myself in college and at that level of wrestling. Where are you going to be wrestling at? Um, undecided right now. There we go. The crowd made a lot of noise for you. It's obvious you have a great support system. Tell me about them. Is your family, is it your family, is it your friends, is it your team? Is it all of the above? And how important is that? It's all of the above. Um, it's very important. You know, um, I've struggled with a lot 
um, and home life and a lot of mental health. And, you know, I have friends and teammates, coaches to pick me up and stuff, and I think that's very important. You can be a great wrestler, but if you don't got an amazing mindset and people to back you up when you win or lose, you're just not going to do good. True words have never been said, very well said, and congratulations on a very important and very huge state title. Thank you so much. Of course, and good luck in college. Thank you.